I almost think you'd scare the public if you put this out. Like, why are they telling me this? Should I be concerned about my bank? It'll probably start on a Friday. The banks will announce a security action necessitating their computers to go offline all weekend. So that if and when we do have to have that announcement on on Friday night, ideally Friday night, um, that people are in a position to receive it, understand it, and say, yeah, that works. Digital money will disappear. They can just steal your money? Followed by the detonation of strategic electromagnetic pulse bombs to knock out major grids. What will seem like an attack on America by terrorists or Russia. Noon is the time darkness pervades. It settles at three. Three moons shall pass, and light shall reveal my hand, says the Lord. I found myself standing outside, looking up into the night sky. I am quite perplexed, because I saw three moons in the sky. The chariots in the sky reveal my hand. Three more moons shall pass, and reveal those that stand. The Lord says, is it not a small thing? for my hand to cover the sun. As the light of the sun begins to fade, I see three cycles of the moon, but no sun. Do you also get the feeling that there is something very significant about to happen? We are living in a time where so many things are converging, and today we will look at some of the signs that are pointing us to this upcoming event. In the previous two videos, we looked at a very peculiar property of the heavens. All eclipses that occurred before January 11th, 2024, whether these were lunar or solar, have matching eclipses that are mirrored around January 11th. This means that if a lunar eclipse, for example, occurred 3001 days before January 11th, it will have a matching partner 3001 days after January 11th. This design that we see in the heavens would seem to present a heavenly menorah. Now the first question that comes to mind is this, why did God design the heavens to have this property? And why would he have chosen January 11th, 2024 as the date around which he would mirror all lunar and solar eclipses? Even more importantly, what does the time before January 11th represent? And what about the time that follows January 11th? From a biblical perspective, there are roughly 6,000 years of eclipses that occurred before January 11th this year. And this would then represent the 6,000 years during which man was supposed to have dominion over the earth, but where that authority was delivered into the hands of our enemy, Satan, when Adam and Eve were deceived by him into disobeying God in the Garden of Eden. God created the heavens and the earth in six days, and on the seventh day he rested. Similarly, if we consider how God's design of the heavens is marking the end of this time, and the beginning of new times during which God's rest will be implemented, we see how the previous 6,000 years represent the oppression of humanity in sin under the rulership of an imposter, Satan, who is about to be evicted from that position of rulership. If God rested on the seventh day after working for six days, then January 11th may be marking the time of transition into a new time during which God's rest, which the Bible shows us to be 1,000 years in length, will be implemented. However, before this rest begins, God's word also shows us that the enemy first receives a short time to glean from God's harvest, according to the harvest model that is found in Leviticus 23. And during this time, Satan will be allowed to rule over the world without restraint. God's word tells us in Genesis 1 verse 14 that the primary purpose of the lights in the heavens is to serve as signs that signal God's appointed times and to mark his feast days. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. We have seen very specific examples of these in the blood moon tetrads that were discovered a little over a decade ago, in which it was clear to see how four consecutive total lunar eclipses marked very specific feast days, as described to us in Genesis 1 and signaled very important milestones connected to Israel, God's chosen nation, especially over the past century. As I have discussed in earlier videos, Blood Moon Tetrad signaled Israel becoming a nation again in 1948, and again when they took back Jerusalem in 1967. In the same way that the Blood Moon Tetrads are very significant, we can also expect the upcoming lunar and solar eclipses of March 24th and April 8th, 
to carry very important significance given that they are the very first signs provided in the era that follows 6,000 years of the earth being under Satan's control. I came across two prophecies in which the upcoming lunar eclipse was pointed out as a very significant sign. It is also interesting that our sister in Christ was given this dream three times, and one of those times fell exactly on January 11th. I believe our Heavenly Father is telling us that January 11th marked the beginning of new times, during which the remainder of prophesied events in His Word will begin to be fulfilled. I will play a short excerpt from this dream and you are welcome to watch the entire video in the link provided in the description. I have come to share a dream with you. Um, this is one of the dreams about, does mention Antichrist in it, that I've been praying about sharing this one. I had it on um, January 6th and it actually started journaling at 6.20 p.m. But then I was seeking the Lord. Do I or do I not share this dream? I had it again at 1.11.24 at 2.22. And then I had it again and journaled at 11.20 a.m. today. So, this is the third time I've had this dream. The first time, like I said, I've been laying it for the Lord, praying about it. <laughs> His will be done. Alright, let's get to this dream. And the Lord named it too. Three moons till darkness dream. This dream began in pitch black. There was nothing but blackness all around. Then I heard from the heavens. Amos 8, 9. Amos 8, 9, I exclaimed still fully in the dark. What does it say? I asked. I can't see anything, nor am I able to read it, if I could see. Suddenly, I saw one single candle flickering in the dark. The light instantly seemed to drive back the shadows of the darkness. I heard again, Amos 8-7. But then out of nowhere, a holy Bible is handed to me, and it's open to Amos 8, 9. I heard the voice from heaven say, read it out loud. Okay, I replied, Amos 8, 9. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. Oh, I said in surprise, and then continued, Lord God, is it this time now? Then the scene changed. I found myself standing outside looking up into the night sky. I am quite perplexed because I saw three moons in the sky. These moons, I, three moons, I exclaimed. How can that be? There are three distinct moons. I counted them out loud, for I could see them clearly. One, two, three. Then I felt like walking. As I do, I notice it's cold, and I see snow. Suddenly, I have a coat around me and gloves on my hands. As I walk through the night that turns to day, and then vice versa continually, I walk through several nights and days, then stop to look up at the night sky once again. It's cold enough I can see my breath. Now one of the three moons is fading in the sky. What? I exclaimed. What's happening to the other moon? I asked out loud. Keep walking, I heard a voice from the heavens say. Excuse me. I shrugged my shoulders and said, oh, Okay. I continued walking through nights and days, and time seemed to swiftly pass by. I had been walking for quite a few nights and days, 
Am I to continue? I asked out loud. I looked up into the sky for once again. As the time before, I felt compelled to stop in the night hours. I looked up, and to my surprise, there are only two moons now in the sky. One of the moons seems as if it has totally faded from my view. Am I walking through time? I asked out loud, but no answer came. I looked around to see if any uh, anyone else was seeing the two moons, although one seemed fainter than the other. Nope, it's just me and all of heaven here. I felt compelled to begin walking again through nights and days. The temperature is getting warmer. I stopped to look up at the sky once again. Oh, how I love to look at the night sky with all the stars and the moon shining brightly. The moon, I exclaimed. Wait, there's only one now that I can see. I walked on into the light of day and I noticed a sprig of grass. Green grass. And the air is no longer bitter cold. But what now? I ask. I heard the voice from the heaven speak once again. Before the third moon arrives, your Amos 8 9 moment occurs. I looked up at the sky, realizing what was to come. But then I felt compelled to ask. What happens when the moon arrives? Suddenly, I saw a black robed figure with a long scythe in one hand, a massive sword in the other. I'm seeing now before me a great sprawling city. The black robed figure flies and passes from house to house while skipping over some. I heard wails and terrible screaming, and my face drains of all its color. Oh no, I whispered and said, the time of the destroyer has come. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus Christ, I cried out, and I fell to my knees on the cold ground. Again, I heard the voice from, excuse me, from heaven speaking out loud these words. Warn my people the time of sorrow has come. The plagues return, the plagues return. Darkness falls, the destroyer comes, amidst a tide of so much more. I looked up into the heavens again, and now there I saw a face in the moon. It belongs to the man Antichrist, the man of sin. As I stand at this, as I stare at this odd sight, with my mouth wide open, I heard the same voice say from the heavens again, as he spoke to me. It is his time to rule. He brings forth in the darkness of Amos eight nine, those ones bound, and their children. The time of devils and demons have come to your world. Warn my people, this is the now time of the now, of the season of now I have foretold about. And then I awoke all three times. This dream's meaning is very clear to me because three moons from January 11th, the start of the new times, takes us right to the day of Passover as seen on TorahCalendar.com. Our sister also mentions Amos 8 verse 9, the day on which darkness descends over the earth at noon, and I would like to dig a little deeper here. Let's consider once again what we read in Amos 8 verse 9. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. If you've been watching my channel for some time, you will know that I often point out how God uses patterns so that we can know what to expect in the future based on events that occurred in the past, and this is explained to us in Ecclesiastes and Isaiah. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. 
Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new, it hath been already of old time which was before us. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be for ever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it, that men should fear before him. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and God requireth that which is past. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. Let them bring them forth, and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things what they be, that we may consider them, and know the latter end of them, or declare us things for to come. Now the million dollar question is this, when did God darken the earth at noon in the past, so that we can know what to expect in the future? The first instance is shared with us in Exodus 10, where God brought three days of darkness over Egypt around the time of Passover, just before Israel's exodus from Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. The most notable instance, however, of darkness that came over the earth at noon is given to us in the account of Jesus' crucifixion, which of course also occurred on Passover. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The sixth hour of the day is of course noon, and while Jesus was sacrificed as the perfect Passover lamb, the world was covered in darkness for three hours. Given that darkness also covered Egypt around the time of Passover during Israel's exodus, we can clearly see a repeating pattern that tells us when to expect Amos 8 verse 9 to be fulfilled. It will happen on Passover, and this year's Passover, being marked with a lunar eclipse and being the first that will occur in the new times, carries immense importance in my opinion. Now if God is showing us that the third moon represents the time of the fulfillment of Amos 8 verse 9, then we know with certainty that the third moon, which happens to be marked by a lunar eclipse in 2024, represents Passover, as Passover would be the only feast during which one would expect the sun to be darkened. On Israel's calendar, however, they will be celebrating Purim, which includes getting drunk and participating in the zombie walk, Israeli rituals that have become part of these festivities. And if Israel is celebrating Purim at a time when they should be observing the Passover, it is then no surprise to see God's view of the matter in the verse that follows Amos 8 verse 9, where God would be judging Israel's completely inappropriate behavior during the time when they should be observing the Passover. And I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins, and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the morning of an only son, and the end thereof is a bitter day. Purim is a feast that was established by Israel and not by God, and when God says, I will turn your feasts into mourning, he could be pointing to Israel replacing the Passover with Purim in 2024. But how do we know whether the third moon really represents Passover this year? God's word shows us that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word would be established. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Please listen to the following excerpt in which a similar message was given by our brother in Christ Edward Amling. Once again, you can view the full video by using the link provided in the description below. Noon is the time darkness pervades. It settles at three. Three moons shall pass, and light shall reveal my hand, says the Lord. The chariots in the sky reveal my hand. Three more moons shall pass, and reveal those that stand. 
The Lord says, Is it not a small thing for my hand to cover the sun? As the light of the sun begins to fade, I see three cycles of the moon, but no sun. I am seeing three hours of darkness in a month March. Fixed time of the moon, seventh day following, says the Lord. Darkness, darkness, darkness. I am seeing March is a significant month. March, March, March. I am seeing the month of March as significant in God's timeline. I am seeing March as a time of sorrow, a harbinger of things to come, says the Lord. Judgment starts, calamity coming. Behold, the beginning of the end. Is the sun not shining? Very, very soon. I see the sun coming up, but I don't see it setting as usual. And the Lord says, the sun shall be darkened in its going forth. I see the sun hidden behind something. See how I hide the sun, says the Lord. I am seeing that there is no sun. It seems to be like going dark or being covered by darkness or something. I see it might be hidden behind something. The beginning of the end. I see fireballs falling. I look higher and these things are coming from the sky. As I continue to look more closely at this phenomenon, these things are coming out of the expanse above the sky. These might be falling stars. This prophetic word confirms what is said in that of the first dream. Then there is also this older prophecy from Ken Peters in which he said the following. Listen carefully to the words that he uses. You have all been through the time of preparation. A quite lengthy time to make you ready. Just as the children of Israel were made ready in Egypt, just as Joshua readied the people for three days before crossing the Jordan, just as the church was made ready in the upper room, so have I been preparing you, Jubilee. For certainly a work, an outpouring, a movement of my grace, power, and spirit is now ready to come upon each of you. A true New Times, New Testament Passover deliverance is coming upon each of you. A true New Times, New Testament Passover deliverance is coming upon each of you. You each shall experience as Israel did. You each shall overcome your enemies as Israel did. You each shall plunder this world's economic system as Israel did. You each shall receive strength and wholeness where you were once feeble as Israel did. You shall accept my wonder-working power as Israel did. I have not forgotten you. I have not forgot your labor of love. Jubilee, receive this day new hope. Jubilee, receive this day great expectation. Jubilee, receive this day all I have promised for you. When we look at Passover on Torah calendar this year, we see that it is marked by the first lunar eclipse of the new times or the first eclipse that occurs after the heavenly division of eclipses that occurred on January 11th. It is also the third moon that will be seen in the heavens after January 11th. Just as the last solar and lunar eclipses of the old times mark the beginning of the war between Israel and Hamas, the next two eclipses, according to God's word, mark the beginning of God's wrath being poured out over the world. The fact that this eclipse that occurs on March 24th to 25th falls on the time of Passover makes this incredibly important. When Jesus was crucified, we saw how there was a lunar eclipse marking that event. So we now have several witnesses and repeating patterns pointing us to this coming Passover as the time when darkness will descend over the earth and where God's word will once again be fulfilled. 
When it comes to the fulfillment of God's word, our Heavenly Father tells Jeremiah that he watches over his word to perform it while showing him the rod of an almond tree. Moreover the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen well, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Why would God show Jeremiah the rod of an almond tree when speaking about the fulfillment of his word? I believe this is because the timing of this fulfillment is linked to the blossoming of the almond tree, but the Bible also links Jeremiah's almond branch to two other passages in which the same is mentioned. These point us to the start of what is known as the day of the Lord and God's judgment over the earth. The first is found in Ecclesiastes 12 where Solomon says the following, Also when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fears shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and a desire shall fail. Because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. In this verse we see how Solomon describes people going to their long homes, or their eternal homes, while mourners will be seen in the streets at the same time. Is the same message not reflected in Jesus' parable where he mentions those who will be in outer darkness and where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when the heavenly marriage occurs? Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they found both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. The second instance in which the blossoming branch is found and mentioned in connection with the day of the Lord is in Ezekiel 7, where we read the following. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come, the day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee. And I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. Behold the day, behold, it is come, the morning is gone forth, the rod hath blossomed, pride hath budded. The enemy would also seem to be in the know, as they have been pointing to a lunar eclipse occurring when a serious war breaks out as shown in this scene from the Ipeco 2 animation. When we look at this scene from above, you will notice a dove appearing above the army that is gathered below, and this certainly gives the impression of peace being removed from the earth at this time, and this may be connected to Revelation 6. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword. When we consider events around us in the world, alarming signs are also pointing us to the possible collapse of the world economy and stock markets in the days to come. If Passover falls on March 25th, then March 11th would mark the beginning of the biblical new year. On March 11th, a date that has twice been associated with very significant events in recent history, the first being the Fukushima earthquake in Japan in 2011, and the second being the declaration of the pandemic on March 11, 2020, the U.S. Federal Reserve's Bank Term Funding Program, or BTFP, will expire on March 11 this year. This is only a few days away from the time of posting this video. The Fed will also be raising the interest rates on these emergency loans that were given to banks, resulting in banks now being required to pay back more than they have borrowed. 
and this additional cost being passed on to their clients, obviously. This will lead to a serious liquidity problem, and this will have a knock-on effect, eventually seeing the House of Cards coming crumbling down. It is also interesting that March 11th this year marks the beginning of the Biblical New Year, and given our understanding that this time represents the beginning of God's rest that will be enforced over the world, it would make sense that the economy and the means to make money will be taken away. Jesus hinted at this in John chapter 9. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus also told us that we are temples of the Holy Spirit and that Jesus' light shine into the world through us. And we understand then that when those who have Jesus' light in them are removed from this world, Jesus will also be removed from this world. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. The fact that March 11th was connected to two prior instances where world-changing events occurred on this date should tell us that this year's instance will be of major importance, especially when we know that there is a plan in the works that will be implemented on this day that will affect the economies of the world. The Economist magazine is also hinting at the coming stock market crash, with this cover being displayed on their latest edition, and given that several billionaires have recently sold billions of dollars of their own company stock, should tell us that something big is about to go down. They know what is coming, but even converting stocks into cash will not help them, since cash will become worthless as well. There are also hints in the media that March 11th is seen as the second 9-11. Our brother in Christ Steve Fletcher shared a video recently in which he showed how March 11th is connected to 9-11, as can be seen in this excerpt from his video regarding this message from the movie The Matrix. As you can see, we've had our eye on you for some time now, Mr. Anderson. It seems that you've been living two lives. In one life, you're Thomas A. Anderson. The other life is lived in computers, where you go by the hacker alias Neo and are guilty of virtually every computer crime we have a law for. One of these lives has a future, and one of them does not. Just the day before he released this video, I was watching a movie on Netflix where the following scene shows us the same information. 3.11 connected to 9.11. This is from the movie Spaceman, which was recently released. This idea of a second 9.11 is what the iPetco 2 animation is all about, and a 9.11 event is featured early on in this animation. The plan that will be implemented on March 11th may not see an immediate collapse of the economy, and there may be a short delay before a total collapse occurs, but even this would seem to be signaled to us by our enemy. I have always wondered why the Skull and Bone Society uses the number 322 as their number, and in this scene of the iPetco 2 animation that number is hidden in plain sight when we count the lights that are seen under the stealth bombers. From the information that we have and knowing that the enemy signals their plans ahead of time to the unsuspecting public, it would be reasonable to conclude that March 22nd this year may be the day on which the economic collapse finally occurs. March 22nd falls on a Friday, and we have been told in more than one instance that the plan is to collapse the economy on a Friday. The first clip involves a meeting of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation on November 9th, 2022, in which they were discussing what information to share with the unsuspecting public, and the person who speaks pointing out that ideally, they want to make the announcement on a Friday. There's a lot of questions here, um, and so, you know, there, there are a lot of things we've been thinking about, and what we want to hear from you today is what, your, what you think would the priorities would be in order to go about setting expectations appropriately in public about how we would execute Title II. So that if and when we do have to have that announcement on on Friday night, ideally Friday night, 
um, that people are in a position to receive it, understand it, and say, yeah, that works. Um, and we can see how this will happen. Of course, there will be doubters, but there's a lot of things going on. But I don't think you have much hope of, of reaching a public that doesn't have a professional need to know. I, I completely agree with that. I almost think you'd scare the public if you put this out. Like, why are they telling me this? Should I be concerned about my bank? Like, my insurance company doesn't tell me what they're doing with my assets. So they just assume they're going to pay my claim. Right. It's, it's, I, I think you've got to think of the unintended consequences of taking a public that has more full faith and confidence in the banking system than maybe people in this room do, <laughs> that we want them to have full faith and confidence in the banking system. They know the FDIC insurance is there. They know it works. They put their money in. They're going to get their money out. So there, there's a select crowd of people that are in the institutional side. And if they want to understand this, they're going to find a way to understand this. There's a bunch of law firms represented in this room. There's a bunch of people that'll charge them by the hour a lot of money to explain this all to them. And, and, and it's fine. I don't have a I don't have a problem with that. And they all have huge staffs. But I would be careful about the unintended consequences of starting to blast too much of this out in the general public. Now, if what he said left you with more questions than answers, I believe the announcement that this person was referring to is explained more clearly to people in an episode of The X-Files, where more details of this plan is shared with the public. Please listen carefully to the following excerpt. The corporate takeover of food and agriculture, pharmaceuticals and healthcare, even the military in clandestine agendas to fatten, dull, sicken and control a populace already consumed by consumerism. And I encourage you all to go shopping more. A government that taps your phone, collects your data and monitors your whereabouts with impunity a government preparing to use that data against you when it strikes and the final takeover begins. The takeover of America. By a well-oiled and well-armed multinational group of elites that will cull, kill, and subjugate. Happening as we sit here. It's happening all around us. The other shoe waiting to drop. It'll probably start on a Friday. The banks will announce a security action necessitating their computers to go offline all weekend. Digital money will disappear. They can just steal your money? Followed by the detonation of strategic electromagnetic pulse bombs to knock out major grids. What well, will seem like an attack on America by terrorists or Russia. Or a simulated alien invasion using alien replica vehicles that exist and are already in use. An alien invasion of the U.S. The Russians tried it in 47. Given that March 22nd falls on a Friday this year, shortly before Passover, where God is showing us through the mouth of more than two witnesses to expect darkness to come over the world at this time, it would make perfect sense for the Great Reset that the globalists have been speaking about also to occur at this time. There are only a few days remaining before the first domino in a series begins to fall, and if we see events playing out according to what I have shared with you today, then those who are eagerly anticipating the arrival of our Heavenly Bridegroom can look forward to his soon arrival with great anticipation and excitement. If you are still on the fence about this, why do you not change the path that you are on today? God does not want anyone to go through a time where his wrath is poured out over the wicked, but his word shows us that many of his children will find themselves in the streets mourning when the marriage occurs in heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. How do you ensure that you are ready and found to be worthy to be part of the marriage of the bridegroom when he comes? You need to have obtained salvation through faith and to stand before him in garments that are without spot or wrinkle. And his word shows us how to obtain these and I would recommend watching this video for more details on how to prepare to meet our bridegroom according to the requirements of his word. I hope this information has blessed you and I hope to see you at the feet of our Redeemer really soon. Until next time, or until we meet in the air, God bless.